you probably all have already experienced some static electricity, for example, when taking off a pullover or going off of a car and then touching some objects and suddenly get sapped. But what is actually going on? In this video, uh, I'm going to give you the basics of electrostatics. In earlier videos, we have already talked about anions being negatively charged and cations being positively charged. Now, these principles of if you have more electrons than protons or less protons than electrons that can lead to an overall charge can not only apply to individual atoms, but to entire objects. So if an object is positively charged, it has more protons than electrons. And if it's negatively charged, more electrons than protons. Now at this point, you might want to point out what is the charge of a proton? What is the charge of an electron? Now a proton is charged plus one elementary charge, while the electron is charged minus one elementary charge. And what is an elementary charge? Uh, it is 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 coulombs. So a very small value in the units of coulombs. As our overall charge is made of the difference uh, of the protons and electrons, uh, our charge is quantized. What does this mean? This means we cannot just have any value. Our charge uh, has to be a multiple of the elementary charge. It is impossible to charge an object, let's say, to 1.3 times 10 to minus 19 coulombs, because that would mean we would split an electron or a proton uh, in parts. We can only have a full proton or uh, full electrons. We cannot have anything in between. So charge is quantized and the overall charge will be the number of excess protons uh, times the elementary charge or the number of excess electrons times the elementary charge. So now how do we charge an object? There are three main ways to charge an object. Uh, number one is conduction. You bring a charged object into contact with another one and some electrons simply jump from one onto the other. So we can charge something by contact. The next option is by friction. This is exactly happening when you take uh, your pullover off or when you put a comb through your hair, you're charging an object by friction. How is that happening? Not all substances want electrons as much as others. Uh, some are more electronegative, so they will try to take electrons from something else. So if we bring two uh, substances in contact that have a different electronegativity, let's say this hand wants the electron more, uh, where there is a contact to another substance, it will uh, temporarily take over some electrons from the molecules in the surface of the other substance. So when I break up the contact, uh, then uh, the electrons will stay on one side and the one that's more electronegative will become negatively charged and the other object will become positively charged. Now, of course, with two hands like this, it wouldn't happen because they're made of the same material. So I need uh, two different materials, for example, this material here and the hand or a plastic comb and my hair. Now, instead of just going into contact and ripping off the contact constantly, what I can also do, I can do friction because with friction, uh, if you would look very closely, you would uh, very often create the contact and break it up again, create the contact, uh, break it up again, and so on and so on. So friction is a very efficient way to charge an object. And then the next one is charging an object by induction without even touching it. So what is happening? So let's say I have an object. So let's say I have an object that is charged and I bring it close to a non-charged object. If the electrons can move in this object, what will happen? The electrons will get attracted to the positive charge while the positive charges get repelled. So each side of that object now would have an induced charge. I now could, for example, connect this to ground and let uh, more electrons come in uh, 
through here to counteract my uh, my uh, excess positive charge. And then if I take off the connection to ground, my second object would be negatively uh, charged. This can also happen just on the molecular level. A water molecule, for example, has a slightly positive side and a slightly negative side, so a water molecule can simply reorientate itself towards the charge, and so that the negative side is facing the charge, and then be attracted to it like that. How can we use this? We can do some experiments at home. Uh, for example, you can rub a balloon against your hair to make the balloon charged, and then when you bring it close to the uh, wall, uh, the charges inside the molecules of the wall will reorient it, uh, reorientate themselves so that the charge opposing the charge of the uh, balloon is slightly closer and therefore overall cause an attraction between the balloon and the wall and the balloon will stay on the wall. Another experiment is you can use a comb uh, charge it by going through your hair with it and then bring it close to water and you will see uh, that the water molecules will reorientate themselves so that the opposing charge is closer to the comb therefore overall the attraction will win over the repulsion and the water stream that's falling down from your faucet will get slightly bent around uh, your comb. Uh, now, after we have talked how an object can get charged, let's look how charge can be conducted through an object. Now, what does it mean for an object to be a conductor? It means uh, that there is some charge that can move freely. It could be either the free electrons in the case of metals or ions in a solution. So, for example, with my uh, plug here, uh, the metal is the part that is conducting electricity. Now, what's the opposite of a conductor is an insulator, which is a material uh, that does not allow charge to flow freely. For example, the plastic uh, on my plug here is made of an insulating material because I don't want the charge to go from the metal through the plastic into my hand. And last but not least, we have these interesting materials which are called semiconductors, which under certain circumstances can act like a conductor, and then under other circumstances can act uh, like an insulator. Why are they so important? Because we can basically use them uh, to build a switch. If they act like the insulator, uh, the switch is open, so no current will be passing through that wire. If, however, they can be made to act like a conductor, which happens if I apply an electric field perpendicular to them, then uh, they will let current pass. So we can build tiny, tiny switches that we can turn easily on and off by applying an electric field uh, up and down. And with these little switches, we build uh, our computers, our cell phones, and all our little electronic gadgets uh, that are doing some computations for us.